Children listen to the sounds of our world in different ways. One way for children who are deaf to experience sounds is through cochlear implants. <laughs> Each year, two or three out of every 1,000 children born are either deaf or hard of hearing. Some of these children can understand speech by using a hearing aid. In the 1980s, a new technology gave deaf people a way to hear sounds. In 1990, this device was approved for children. Now over 50,000 children who were born deaf or who lost their hearing can hear using a cochlear implant or CI in one or both ears. I can hear so many things that I could not hear without my cochlear implant. I can hear outside sounds like birds singing, children on the playground, cars driving by, and the recess, recess bell. Learning how a cochlear implant works and deciding whether to get one for your child can be a complex process. It helps to discuss your questions with your implant center and your child's school. Children's Hospital has an experienced and dedicated staff who have helped many families with this choice. A cochlear implant provides access to sound for people for whom hearing aids don't provide enough benefit to be able to understand speech. A cochlear implant stimulates the parts of auditory nerve cells that start in the cochlea of the inner ear. The auditory nerve in turn sends a message to the brain that sounds have come in. You and Mommy um, chose to uh, um, get a cochlear implant so I could hear. That's right. A hearing aid presents sounds acoustically. The hearing aid is sending the amplified sound through an inner ear that isn't working optimally. The cochlear implant, on the other hand, doesn't need to use those parts of the inner ear that aren't working right. Unlike a hearing aid, a cochlear implant has an internal part that goes beneath the skin behind the ear, as well as an external part called the sound or speech processor. There are two parts of the cochlear implant. There's an internal part and an external part. Attached to the internal part are electrodes that are inserted into the cochlea, which is the hearing organ. Starting with the microphone where sounds are picked up, um, at the bottom of the processor is a battery holder. And then we have the transmitting cable with the headpiece attached to it. Um, inside the headpiece is an antenna as well as a magnet. Cochlear implants benefit children and adults alike. And now you and you the footprint garden. So the FDA has broken candidacy up into three different categories for patients who are a little bit younger, so ages 2 to 17, the requirements are severe to profound hearing loss and poor word recognition scores. Okay. And then for the youngest of children, ages 12 months to 2 years, it's profound hearing loss. To learn whether an implant will help, there are several sessions for the child and family to discuss expected changes in your child's life. These include a thorough hearing test, an informational consultation with the audiologist, a speech and language evaluation, a developmental assessment, a discussion with a psychologist to prepare for surgery, and meeting the surgeon. As your child goes through these different evaluations, we continue to have team staffing where all the members of the team who have seen your child gather together and discuss what they've found with your child. Obviously, the parents are always part of that team and will be included at any point throughout the process. How do you turn this on with this button here? This process may appear overwhelming, so remember that CI surgery is just one of many options to help your child communicate. Cochlear implant surgery is always elective. It's always a choice whether to have it or not. Anyone with a severe or profound hearing loss could choose to just continue using hearing aids and use the benefit they get from hearing aids combined with lip reading or speech reading to understand speech. Bees! There's many, many, many bees together. It's loud. 
or they could choose to use hearing aids plus sign language or even just primarily sign language to communicate. Although a child is ready to play and go back to school in a week or so, it takes two to four weeks after the surgery for the incision to heal completely. Then the processor is programmed or mapped and the cochlear implant is activated. This is the first of many mapping appointments with the audiologist. When we first turn the microphone on and the child hears sounds in the room, voices in the room for the first time, it can be a very emotional experience, especially since we don't know what kind of reaction the child is going to have to these new sounds. Activation is like a hearing test. The processor is hooked up to a computer and the child hears different levels of sounds. In the beginning, that's good, that range between barely able to hear and being comfortable is going to be very small because this is a very new sensation for them. And over time, that range will get bigger and bigger. The first mapping provides a fairly weak signal so that it is not too intrusive. Gradually, the amount of sound is increased as the brain learns to interpret the signals. Over time, the purpose of mapping is not to make sound louder, but rather to make it clearer the processor will need to be reprogrammed many times throughout the child's life. Though the cochlear implant provides more access to sound in a threshold level that is almost normal, it's not normal hearing, the brain still has to learn or relearn in some cases how, what the sound is. So it takes a lot of practice and a lot of therapy in order to learn what the sounds are. When a young child is learning to hear, they may not recognize that the sounds are coming from the surrounding environment, like a door closing. The first stage of learning to listen with a CI is for children to recognize sounds they are making themselves. Achoo. Achoo. Bless you. Bless you. There are many ways for a younger child to wear a cochlear implant. The most popular is the BTE, or behind the ear. One of the different ways to um, for the child to support the BTE by wrapping a huggy around the speech processor so the huggy wraps around the ear. That way the speech processor doesn't fall off the ears often. As for the body worn, when the child's ear can't support the BTE, um, some families have sewn in pockets to the child's clothing so that the body worn can be inserted into the pocket. Or the child may wear a harness in the BTE slips onto the harness so that the parent has access in the back, but the child can't necessarily reach around to the back and push all the buttons. Doctors realize that kids will be kids, but they do lay down certain restrictions that protect the cochlear implant. There's not a whole lot that children can't do when they have cochlear implants, but when they are, you know, doing sporting events or doing activities that require a helmet, they should, you know, always wear their helmets, you know, especially when riding their bikes. What's that called? Do you remember? It's not just up to the child to take care of his or her implant. They need loving attention, dedication, and commitment from parents, teachers, and friends, too. Can you help me change your batteries? Your batteries died. Yeah. Can you help me? Your child's teachers will also need training on how to work with your child's cochlear implant processor, how to do basic troubleshooting, change batteries, things like that. Get your hair out of the way. Why? Put it behind your ear. No, no. You ready? It's good to remember and accept that your child is still biologically deaf, even if they can hear using a cochlear implant. In order to make that cochlear implant work the best for your child, your child needs several different supports. The main support that your child is going to need continually is speech and language therapy and what we call oral rehabilitation. Family support is huge to a recovering patient because without that, there really is less incentive to work very hard to make this work, especially in the beginning stages when it's very difficult. Things don't sound the way that they ultimately will. And to have someone say, you can do it, I know it's hard now, it'll get better, but also stimulating them at home with language and love and support. It is important for parents to remember that hearing with a CI is a choice. Cochlear implants aren't right for every child. 
cochlear implants can be a wonderful thing for the majority of families who come through. It provides a whole different world, a whole different access to communication that children who have severe to profound hearing loss otherwise wouldn't have. That said, there are many children for whom cochlear implants are not the right decision. Sound, in fact, can be an intrusion, an unwelcome addition into a child's life. Telephone, and I can turn. I love you. Into an airplane. No matter the decision, the team at Children's Hospital is here to help however they can. After all, everyone wants what is best for the child.